Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and welcome to my very first video in my brand new series, Sheetload Rewind. I hope you'll stick around, find out more about the series, and see what I'm going to create today. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past few days, I have been teasing a new series here on my channel. I have been sharing peeks at the logo here on my community tab and over on my Instagram account. Some of you might already know the name of it, and if you're a channel member, you might already know the premise behind it. But I'm going to tell you all about it, and then we'll get started on today's project. The name of the series is Sheet Load Rewind, and what I'm going to do each month is rewind to a past issue of Sheetload of Cards and create a new set with it. Now sometimes I might have little new tips and tricks to use with the Sheetload, other times I just might make a set and just showcase that sketch and that printable for the month. Now speaking of printable, if you are a subscriber to my channel, you can always download Sheetload of Cards for free. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download the issue that we'll be using today. Now while I'm at that, I wanted to let you know about one of probably the top perks of being a channel member and probably what is the biggest draw to actually joining. You can have access to a visual sheet load archive if you are a channel member. And what this is, is a Google Doc where you see a little picture of each of the month's sketches or that first page and you have a direct link to the download. So there is no more going to past videos watching to find out how to download it, getting the password, if applicable, you can just go straight there and download what you want. If you want to know more about channel memberships and its perks, which there are lots more, I do have a link in that description box below. Speaking of channel memberships, I do have a little announcement today. I have a special channel member shout out. I recently had a member upgrade to paper trimmer level, so I wanted to say a huge thank you to Kim Dixon Creative. Thank you so much for your continued support and your upgrade. I would also like to thank all of my channel members who helped me keep the channel going, and if you're interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, make sure to check out the description box below. A couple months ago, when I came up with the idea to intentionally go back each month and revisit an old sheet load of cards, I put out a poll to my channel members. I wanted them to help me decide the name of this series. I had a couple that I really liked, and you'll see the poll up here on screen now, but I also put a call out, hey, do you have any good ideas? And let me tell you, Lucy Schmidt ended up coming with the best name and it did win the second poll. And that is how we got Sheetload Rewind. Thank you so much channel members for your input and Lucy for the great series name suggestion. What I'll now be doing each month is going back to a previous Sheetload of Cards. And since June 2021 marks the two year anniversary of the relaunch of Sheetload of Cards, I thought it would be a great month to start this series. We are rewinding all the way back to June of 2019, the very first Sheetload of Cards here on YouTube. Here is a look at the printable from then. You might recognize that it looks a little bit different than our printable now, but the overall premise is the same. Taking one sketch, some supplies, and making the most of your paper to get a sheet load of cards. I know that many of you find my channel through the latest sheet load of cards, and some of you even take the time to go back and watch all of the previous videos so you can download them. 
but not everybody has done that or they might not know how long the series has been going on. So that's why I thought it would be a great way to take a look back and reintroduce you to some new to you sketches and sheet loads of cards. Let's talk a little bit about the June 2019 issue, then I'll show you the supplies I'm going to use and we'll get started on today's cards. June 2019 yielded 12 total cards. And when I first started Sheetload of Cards, the cards all looked the same. Like you know now that I tried to switch up cutting so the pieces might vary from card to card, but at, I don't know, maybe the first three or four, the cards did look the same. You would always use the same pattern paper for the background and well, for here for the foreground piece. So today, I am going to tell you how you can switch that up just a little bit if you don't necessarily have three pieces of diagonal striped pattern paper. To get these 12 cards this month, I need four total pattern papers, four solid card stocks for matting and the little fishtail banner, and six solid card stocks for my card bases. Now I'm also going to turn this into a clear sheet load of cards. So instead of regular card stock for my bases, you will see later that I bring in 12 clear card bases. I know many of you like to see ideas using that, so I thought it'd be a great time to revisit the sketch and make a sheet load of clear cards. As always, if you don't want to make a whole sheet load, you have the dimensions here and some alternatives. On the second page, is where you're going to see a little bit of a variance. Now I just have one sketch for the pattern paper and it tells you how to cut it in the various ways. But when I started, I would have a cutting guide for each type of pattern paper. So you'll see here I have three pieces of PP1 and then just one pattern paper for the coordinating one. What I'm actually going to do today, and you'll see it here in just a little bit with my pattern papers I chose, is I'm going to use three different pattern papers for PP1 and the same one for PP2. Also, if you look over here at CS1, you could always use scraps for the little sentiment pieces if you need to. Now, this is a good time to mention that my sentiment today calls for a piece that is three inches wide by a half inch tall. Always feel free to adjust these pieces for what will fit your sentiment in your card. Today, I might not be doing these same dimensions, but I will be using up some scraps. For the fishtails, you'll have another coordinating cardstock, and I too will be switching this up a little bit, and I will explain that later on in the video. Now let's see about the main products I'll be using. For my sentiment today, I'll be using a variety of sayings from this Hero Art stamp set. I got this at Joanne and it is a three by four set called Sending Smiles. For my pattern papers, I will be using pieces from the Paper Studios In Bloom collection. Now, I was saying before how you might not have three pieces of the same pattern paper. This pad actually did come with three of each design, but because I've used it over the years, I no longer have three of each, so that's why I thought it would be a great time to show you how to switch up that sketch so you can still use it if you don't have that many pieces of the same pattern paper. I did go ahead and pre-choose the pieces I'll be using. For my background, I chose three different florals that would all go with the one piece of accent pattern paper for that higher level. And for my fishtails, I got out this piece of light pink cardstock that went with the colors in the pattern paper and will be a nice accent for this piece on the front. Once I start that process video, if I bring in any more tools or products, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you're free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'll be starting today's cards by cutting down my pattern papers. All three will get cut the same way, and if your paper has a specific orientation, you'll want to keep that in mind when you're making your first cuts. 
The pattern paper will fill the card front completely, so I cut two strips that were four and a quarter inches wide and then cut them down into four pieces that were five and a half inches tall. I did the same thing with the other two pieces of pattern paper off camera. Next, I brought in my pink and white piece of pattern paper and cut it per the instructions on this printable, which is in 12 equal pieces. Now, if you don't have a piece of pattern paper like this you want to use, but you do have a cut apart that has like those 12 three by four cards, this is a great sketch to use that on. Next, I brought in two pieces of white cardstock for my CS1 mats, and I cut those until I had 12 pieces that were three and a quarter inches wide by four and one eighth inches tall. On the printable, it says 4.125, and that is the same as four and an eighth. So when you go to cut the height, it will be the mark that's halfway between the four and the four and a quarter. While I work on cutting those, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Now today, I won't really have an answer for you, but I would love to know your answer to the question, how did you find my channel? Was it through sheet load of cards? Was it through another series? Was it long ago when I was doing pocket letters? And hey, even if you don't remember, let me know that as well. Leave your answer in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. Once I had those mats cut, I brought in my clear cardstock to make my card bases. I do have a Q&A video all about my clear cardstock, and I recently found another source for my favorite 10 mil square corners with tissues. Now I have not ordered from the new source yet, so I will link that as well as some Amazon alternatives and that clear card Q&A video in the description box below. These will be top fold cards, so I cut each piece of my clear card stock in half to four and a quarter inches wide, and then I just fold these by hand. You can try a scoreboard, but it might be a little bit slick, but I also wanted to show you that yes, these do stand up on their own. That is a question I get quite frequently, and today since we'll be adding a pretty big piece on the inside, that helps helps it stand up as well. I cut and folded the rest of those off screen before I brought in my piece of pink cardstock to cut my CS2 pieces. The original printable calls for 12 pieces that are two inches wide by one and a half inches tall. Now, because I will be using a special punch today to help me out, I'm gonna cut six pieces that are the same two inches wide, but that are actually four inches tall. The reason for this will make more sense very soon. Because I'm going to have that pattern paper on the inside of my clear card, it really won't be possible to write on that and have it be seen. So I'm going to bring in another two pieces of cardstock and they get cut almost identical to CS1. CS1 originally called for the 12 pieces that were three and a quarter by four and an eighth, and I'm gonna cut the same amount of pieces, but I'm actually gonna cut these just slightly smaller so that they will be hidden by the white piece of cardstock on the front. I think I ended up cutting them a 16th of an inch smaller in both directions. Now we'll get those fishtails put in the ends of the pink cardstock. I'm going to be using this punch from Stampin' Up! and you'll see here that I made them extra wide so that I would have room on the edge to keep pushing them in and keep them aligned with the outside of the punch. So I punch both ends of these with that fishtail banner and then later I will bring in a trimmer and cut these in half. Since this is a pretty small cutting job, I just brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer and I tried to eyeball these in half and now I have 12 fishtails for my final cards. 
I brought back in those scraps of cardstock from my mats for the front and the inside and I will be using those for my sentiment pieces. I found a die in my collection that would work well with the three sentiments I wanted so off camera I cut those three sorry four strips into 12 fishtails for stamping on. From the stamp set, I will be using Hello There, Sending Smiles, and Thinking of You. I will be stamping four of each in this gray Gina K Designs ink. I did go ahead and just pull in my Sizzix mat, and I will be stamping these with a clear block. I thought this might be a little bit easier and quicker than setting each of them up on the Misty. Because I haven't used these stamps before, I am going to test them out on that scrap of paper that I brought in. And it stamped pretty nicely the first time, so I just went ahead and stamped all four of those tags. Once those first four tags were done, I cleaned off the stamp and then I brought in the next sentiment and got it ready on the block. I continued the same process of stamping and then cleaning until I had all 12 sentiments ready to go. Now that all of the parts were ready, I can start assembling my cards. I will go through this pretty quickly, but I do have a couple things that I want to tell you about that I will kind of slow down and discuss. The first of these is being, can you see the adhesive on the back? I get this question a lot when I make clear cards, and the answer is, yes you can. If this is going to be something you don't like for your own personal reasons, you could always put cardstock or pattern paper on the back of the front and the back of the back to cover that up. But I honestly don't let it bother me. I figure the people who are receiving these, they're always looking at them from the front, and if they are displayed, then people are seeing them from the front as well. After the inside pattern paper was placed, I then put my piece of white cardstock on the inside for my personal message. Now per the sketch, the stuff on the front is going to be at the top center of the card, so I made sure when I put my white cardstocks on the inside that I aligned it with the top of the pattern paper and tried to center it as best as I could left to right. Next up, it was time to mat my pink and white pattern paper on the pieces of white cardstock mats. Once again, just like on the inside, my piece of pattern paper is going to go on the top center of the white cardstock mat so that there are even borders on the left, right, and bottom, and that top is left flush. Now it's time to add those fishtails to the pieces that we just matted together. One thing here that you want to keep in mind is that you don't mount it too low that it would go below the bottom of the front of the card. Whew, that was hard to say. So what I did, I brought out my printable and if you print this at 100%, you can actually kind of use it as a template because it's the same size as the actual card. So I laid down my fishtail aligned with the printable and then I brought in that matted piece and adhered those two together. You can always do a little adjusting if you need to to make sure it's straight across. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can just go ahead and put adhesive on the front of that fishtail and then eyeball it going on to the card front. I added adhesive to the back of each of the fishtail pieces and placed these onto the card fronts. Once again, it will be on the top center and you'll want to make sure that your piece is going to cover up the white cardstock on the inside for the personal message completely before you press down the adhesive. I just finish all 12 of these and then we're going to move on to the sentiments. Layering on a clear card base does allow for some extra dimension without using foam tape, but I want to add a little bit more by adding my sentiments to the card fronts with some dimension. So I pulled in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 8 inch width 
I added a piece to the back of each fishtail banner and you'll see here that I am burnishing each one of those with my fingers before placing them on the cards. I do find with this tape that the blue piece does peel off nicely as long as you burnish the back. Once that's been pulled, I place it on my card front and you can just eyeball this and place it where you think it looks nice to you. And then before, of course, I can call these cards done, we're going to have to add a little bit of bling. I wanted to take a minute to tell you about a new to me online sequin source. You might have noticed lately that I've been using a lot of these clear sequins that look kind of holographic. I just love the way they bring out whatever colors are in your card. But as you can see here, I am almost out and I can't find them locally. So I have seen people do hauls before from Cartwright sequins, so I decided to give them a try. Now keep in mind, this is not affiliated with Cartwright sequins. I just wanted to share this with you. I was able to get some different clear and holographic sequins to try out and each of these baggies only cost me about $1.50 to $2. I thought that was a great cost to try these out. Now unfortunately, I don't know how sequins are sized, so I will be placing another order for sequins in more of a 5mm to 6mm instead of the 3 to 4 that I got. I will link their online store in the description box below if you would like to check them out too. I decided for today's cards to use the moonshine confetti that I ordered. These are like sequins without holes and they're flat. And in this one little baggie, there are actually three different sizes of confetti or pieces to put on my cards. What I do is place down one glue dot for each piece of confetti that I want on the card. I put two on the front and then because you can see it from the front, I also put one on the inside. Once the glue dot's in place, I pick up one of the confetti pieces with my jewel picker and place one onto each of the glue dots. I just like the added shine this gives and these are nice and flat for mailing. I continued adding the bling until all 12 cards were finished and here's a close up look at each one. I hope you enjoyed this sheet load rewind to June 2019. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you would like to download the June 2019 sheet load of cards, as always, it is free to subscribers and we just go on the honor system here. Please make sure if you're going to download and or print it that you have already clicked on that subscribe button below. It's free, it's quick, and it's easy. Down in the description box, right above my P.O. box, is a link to the June 2019 sheet load of cards. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.